Hi guys, welcome to an interesting video on Wild Rift. So today we're back with the patch 2.6 review. So I'm right on top of this one because the patch just released an hour ago and I just got off work. So I've come home, taken a shower and I'm ready to get right into it. So without further ado, let's just get straight into the patch notes. Um, big, big changes this patch. Of course, it is a major patch being patch 2.6. So, you guys can expect a tier list and a best bands coming up real soon. But anyways, let's quickly move on. So, two new champions, Kale and Morgana. Um, with the accompanying event as well. They are already released as of now. And Mundo's rework is also out. And it is also out as of now. So, um couple of changes so first thing is the champ select so they're adding uh, five bands per team um, of course release region by region so um, reason being is that the regions that got the game later would have less champions because they had less time to accrue champions so five bands may be too much for them but anyways just speaking in general I do find this change pretty um, weird because they've always said that the justification for only three bands was that um, they felt that people didn't have enough champions, and just a couple of patches later, they say that uh, people have enough champions, so it's time for five bands, which I do find pretty strange because the, the time elapsed between these two announcements was very little, so it seems that they're a bit wishy-washy when it comes to this. But anyways, I think having five bands per team is good so that everybody has a ban and everybody has agency from themself, uh, for themselves on who they want to ban, so I think that's pretty good. Um, ranked re uh, reward system is here where you can get the glorious skin through the system as well as getting rank points to buy stuff in the store. Um, pretty interesting change but we're not gonna discuss too deep into it because if not this video will be like an hour long because there are just too many changes. But basically there's a rewards track and there is a rank rewards store. So basically long story short is the more you play the more rewards you can get and the more points you can get to buy even more rewards so um we of course have the new rank season 4 coming up in i believe it's um two or three days and new wild pass as well with hexplorer shivana so um new players uh, have a new like tutorial kind of system um based around jinx of course with the arcane hype kind of logical New uh, Earth mode is coming, which is Ultra Rapid Fire, which is a very, very uh, fun mode where everybody has like unlimited mana and very, very short cooldowns. So really just a uh, fun to play kind of mode, which will only be available later on. Uh, also region by region, but I do believe um, based on the events portion, it should be around the 10th of December uh, for at least one or two regions, I believe. So here, um, we have a couple of new skins. So um, Arcane, Jinx, and Vi, of course, um, available in the store for purchase now, where it was free. Um, we got the couple of um, skins for the new champions, being Kale, Morgana, and uh, Mundo. Uh, all his skins got reworked. And, of course, the new um, Explorer Shivana skin. Um, new Oriana skin for the new rank season. And a couple of other uh, skin lines like Warden Jax, the Mecha um, line for Kha'Zix and Rengar, as well as the Crystal Rose line. So, yeah. And, of course, as usual, we got a lot of new accessories. Um, nothing too special here. Um, something to note is that the Ziggs one, you actually get by playing the the uh, Hex Tech Mayhem game, I think, which is on Steam, which is um, a rhythm game based around Ziggs. So that's how you get that emote, in case you guys are wondering. Uh, we have new um, emotes for to, to flash your rank. So I guess you can flex your rank. If you have a high rank, also the Oriana version uh, of that as well, and a lot of new emotes, a lot of new recall effects, and yeah, banners and such. So spawn tags and couple of new um, borders for your profile. So uh, quite a ton of stuff, and we already have this event out now, the Kill or Morgana event, where you can get one of them for free. Pretty um stock standard for Wild Rift uh, champion releases. And we have the Earth um, event, which is on 10th December, which is why I say likely Earth will be released on 10th of December. And Crystal Rose event on 15th December when the skin lineup does release. And yep, Hexed Mayhem it is. Um, 
called so there is a Hextech Mayhem event on 15 December as well to get the Zix icon so oh I didn't actually realize it was covered there but yeah so yeah now we get into the champion changes which there are a ton of so Amumu is getting a mini re uh, rework he's getting a base health nerf and a base uh, mana regen nerf but um in compensation he's actually getting the um, PC rework of his bandage toss so basically um, he can charge up to 2 stacks, so you can cast your Q twice, um, and the mana cost is going down very significantly, and the cooldown is not at a fixed 3 seconds instead of having a 14 to 8 second cooldown depending on rank, and you normally max your E or, uh, you normally max your Q last, I believe, on Amumu, so this is quite a big change, and the base damage is going down as a result, so it's mainly used for gap closing and CC, not for damage anyways, so it doesn't really matter too much there. Um, and on the other hand, his W, his Despair, um, damage is actually going up by 5, and the percentage, uh, base percent damage is um, going down slightly um, to compensate for this. Um, tantrum still going down by 10%, and the alt range is going down by 0.25, as well as the stun duration um, becoming a flat 1.5 seconds, so it does not, it does not scale up anymore. Um, but, uh, of course, um, most of these are nerfs in compensation for the buff on his bandage toss. So what happened in PC was that he became a meta support, um, especially in combination with Misfortune where they can combo their alts. So we'll have to see if he becomes a, a support in Wild Rift. So that will be pretty interesting. We shall see if that happens, but I personally think it could be possible, although Misfortune is not in a very good spot at the moment. So Ash getting a base uh, attack damage buff, um, of 6, which of course could make a, uh, a difference, but very very minor buff. Caitlyn getting a pretty major nerf on her ult. So ult damage is going down by 100 at, at rank 1 and 200 at max rank. And 200 base damage is a lot. It's almost a third of her total damage uh, on her max rank ult, which is huge. And it is a third on her base uh, rank ult, which is huge. So this is a huge nerf to the Caitlyn ultimate, which um, honestly, if there are any team uh, teammates around for your enemy, will always be blocked anyway. But um, on those couple occasions where there's no one to block for them, it's like a guaranteed kill, and the nerf to the damage here could make a difference. So we, we will have to... Actually, we won't even have to see about that. It's guaranteed to make Caitlyn worse, who is already... who is actually in a pretty good spot. Probably... Um, you, you'll see in the uh, tier list that's going to come out soon, but yeah, so Gragas um, getting a damage buff on his W2 monsters and a base damage increase of 50 at um, early ranks and then 25 on his ult, so making him a more viable jungle, which is of course a good thing. Really nice to have a bit more jungle diversity. In the meanwhile, Graves is getting nerfed, 10% um, of his um, crit damage multiplier and 1 second on his quick draw. The 1 second on quick draw probably doesn't really matter and this one we have to see how it affects um, him because uh, Graves always builds crit of course so um, it will probably have an impact but just how big of an impact uh, we'll have to see. Anyways, I don't actually think Graves is a incredibly good jungle in solo queue because um, so many other better ganking junglers like let's say Kha'Zix or Lee Sin are way better than him but he needs like 3 items to actually go online so he's more of like a farming style jungler so he probably wasn't in a very very uh, incredibly good spot in the first place so probably the nerfs aren't really warranted in my opinion. I really like getting a minor nerf where on her on level 1 she gets um, 4 less damage on her on hit damage of her passive but um, it scales the same, so at max level, it's only 4 less than previously, so not a too huge nerf. Don't think it will affect her too much unless she alls in at, le at like level 1 or level 2, so probably not gonna matter too much in my opinion. Now, Jay's getting a very huge buff in my opinion, so his AD per level is going up by uh, roughly 1, so that's a bonus of about 14 AD for free. His base armor going up by 5, which will make a difference, and basically all his skills are getting buffed. So his Q, um, Hammer Form, uh, getting a damage increase as well as a Radius increase. His Shock Blast damage uh, is getting increased as well at higher ranks, which of course you do max this ability first, so that will um, actually uh, take effect a lot faster. His W... Um, getting a mana regen buff by 2 at all ranks, which of course is helpful. And his um, E 
Acceleration Gate Shock Blast combo going up by 10% damage, which I think is very significant because that is going to increase Jace's poke significantly in combination with um, the uh, Shock Blast buff. So Jace actually on release, people thought he were, was really good and he was getting banned a lot. But after a while, people realized that Jace wasn't as obnoxious as everybody thought. And basically, he became um, not picked or banned anymore like midway through the pack. So I think this will probably um, bring him back up to viability where he's probably going to get picked and probably going to get banned. So yeah. Cannon getting a pretty interesting change where they're nerfing his um, W damage quite significantly. Uh, actually, not really quite significantly, but basically, they're transferring his W damage to his Q to redistribute his power, which is a nerf for two reasons. Firstly, you can cast your E onto multiple targets, but you can only cast your Q onto one target, so that will affect his team fight and his AoE. And secondly, your Q is a guaranteed hit because you don't actually have to aim it. As long as they're marked, you can just reactivate W for guaranteed damage. Whereas Q is a skill shot that you can miss, so overall it's a nerf to Cannon's damage. Um, don't really think Cannon is that obnoxious, so um, don't really think the nerfs were needed that much, but it's a pretty um, good nerf for, for especially Baron Linus who don't like to fight against Cannon, I guess. And MF actually getting a buff, doubling down on her strength, which is her roaming uh, with her strut. 15 movement speed increase is actually pretty significant. It's like... Um, almost like a, another extra kind of boots. And her bullet time, AP and AD ratio going up. Uh, of course, we want to focus more on the AD ratio going up by 10%, which will actually make a significant difference um, if you build um, her either lethality or crit. It both both will make a difference. A uh, probably bigger difference if you build uh, lethality because there's more AD in that build. So um, it will definitely make a difference. Yeah. So... Um, Nunu getting a very, very minor nerf, whereas a 1 second uh, cooldown nerf on his consume probably doesn't really matter too much. Senna getting a missile speed increase on her ult doesn't really matter too much. Soraka getting a heal increase on her W by 10 at all levels um, doesn't really matter too much as well. Twisted Fate getting a nerf that actually does matter. So two two big nerfs. First is this health. So 10 health per level nerf, which adds up to 140 health total, which can make quite a big difference in the late game. Pick a card getting a um, minor nerf where instead of having a static 6 second cooldown, it now has a cooldown that scales down to 6.5, so it will affect his early game a little bit more. And the big nerf here is his destiny, where his teleport range is going down from 5k to only 4200 range. 800 range is pretty significant, so you're gonna have to do a lot more walking and your roamings are gonna be a lot worse, which is what Twisted Fate is mainly picked for. And it's not like Twister Fate is an S or S plus now. I think he's like maybe A tier at best. So maybe this will make him kicked out of the meta. Possibly. But we'll have to see. So Vagar getting um a buff. Um the standard 40 health buff. Um 5 armor um buff at base level. And his um W actually getting a um, minor buff, especially in the early ranks, where is where he's a lot weaker, which does make sense. And his ult as well, getting a buff at the early ranks. So, the, if they wanted to buff Vagar, they're definitely targeting the right areas, which is which is his early game, because uh, his early game is of course very weak, because he's a Nasus kind of character where you have to um stack up. In his late game, he would have it stacked, so you you don't really need to buff him for a late game, but early game, yeah, I guess so. Vagar a bit similar to Jace, where everybody was banning him at the start. Um, when he was first released, and people realized he wasn't actually that strong, then they stopped banning him and stopped picking him more or less. So, um, probably, is this change going to really matter that much? Nice changes for Vega players, but if you're not a Vega player, this change probably not going to impact you all that much. Probably just makes it easier for him to stack, because he's not really focused on damaging you in the early game anyway, so it doesn't really matter too much in that sense. Zai actually getting a nerf um, of her base 80 by, by 6, uh, opposite of Ash, and... Her W cooldown is going up by a pretty significant amount, uh, 3 seconds, but take note that she did get her this buffed like way back when. So this is kind of like reverting that buff, so not the worst nerf in the world, but definitely taking a, uh, Zai taking a hit. I think probably I overrated Zai quite a bit on my previous tier list, so she's probably going to be dropping down the tier list, especially with this nerf. Xin Zhao, um, having trouble keeping up apparently. Um, I think Xin Zhao is still pretty good actually, but... Um, apparently, they think he needs a buff, so he's getting the standard 40 health buff and armor per level um, 
increase, therefore he's getting a little bit more armor. It's a very, very minor buff, honestly, but make his uh, jungle clear, clear um, healthier and make him a little bit tankier, I guess will help him quite a bit. So Zed, who I think definitely needs to get nerfed, is finally getting a nerf. But his nerf is very, very minor. It's just a like 5 um, armor decrease and only a 10 um, damage decrease on his shuriken. Um, it's only 10 damage. They're not nerfing his ult or, or anything. Um, 10 damage, of course, will multiply by 2 or 3 when you throw shurikens, but I think 10 damage is pretty minor. I think Zed is pretty obnoxious, so... Yeah, but... Especially when he's getting Edge of Night in this patch, which we'll cover later, so... Uh, I think that this nerf is definitely a step in the right direction, but it's not... Uh, doesn't have a huge impact. Whereas the Ziggs one... He has a, had had a lot of nerfs that didn't have any impact at all, like his passive nerf, his W nerf. But this nerf, I think, actually will make a significant impact, which is the same health nerf that Twisted Fate got. So 140 health decrease at max level, which will affect his survivability quite a significant amount. And his mana cost on his Q going up by like 10 at all ranks, which will affect it combined with the base mana nerf. So you will be able to throw less Bouncing Bounce, particularly in the early game and in the laning phase. Although late game probably doesn't affect too much because you would have got your like Archangel Staff or your Luden's Echo or your mana items basically. So probably wouldn't affect his late game too much, but more of his laning phase. And his um, alt cooldown is going up by 15 at all ranks. So it doesn't have that scaling cooldown thing, it's 15 at all ranks. So um, that will probably affect him more than a lot of the other alt nerfs where they gave a 15 second nerf then a 10 second nerf then a 5 second nerf which means at late game it is only a 5 second difference than previous but this one is a 15 second one I still don't think it's gonna be the huge the, the biggest of nerfs but I think that this nerf will be felt unlike like a lot of the previous Zix nerfs so I think it's a pretty good pretty good um, nerf to Zix now ARAM changes as shown And the new items Banshee's Veil, which I think is a really good item, gives um, AP, MR, Ability Haste, and a Spell Shield. So the main factor of, of how good this is, is how often the Spell Shield comes up. But it's a really good defensive item for mages, which they really, really needed. The Crystalline Reflector, of course, did help against AD, but you kind of want this for both the MR and the Spell Shield. The Spell Shield is really, really helpful for mages and their survivability, so really welcome addition to the game. On the other hand, Age of Night is going to be a staple lethality item for anybody building lethality because it gives health the same amount of AD as the rest of the uh, items, uh, being like Yomu's and uh, Unroll Glaive. Of course, Dust Blade gives a little bit more. Um, it gives the Spell Shield as well and the 10 uh, lethality, of course. So, the main thing that makes this very good is, of course, the Spell Shield that blocks the next enemy ability. It's basically a lethality item you always want to go because. When you weigh the 4 lethality items, you normally don't want to ever go for Amul Grave. You normally want to go for Yomus just for the movement speed increase. And then if you're only going for 2, it's basically Dust Blade versus Edge of Night. And if you want to talk about having more damage uh, of, on Dust Blade versus having a Spell Shield on, on Edge of Night, the, the defensive option is almost always better. So probably the, the like default lethality, lethality build will be like Yomus into Edge of Night, is what I think is going to happen. So... Uh, Age of Night is really, really good for our lethality users like Zed, Kha'Zix, uh, maybe even like Varus probably will build Age of Night. So yeah, it's going to make Assassins way worse to deal with because um, they can block a free spell. So if they like go in and you want to stun them, you can't even do that anymore. So Assassins getting a pretty huge buff in this patch. Next, we got a Hextech Mega Drive item, which is a very big question mark item for me because of a couple of things. So firstly, you get health, mana, um, AP, and ability. Okay, so AP means that you generally would be building it on enchanters instead of someone like a Leona, for example, who doesn't actually need AP at all. But the, the um, passive Tinker reduce the cooldown of your active abilities by 10%, 5 second cooldown when you heal or shield, which is the enchanter kind of part of it, and 15% where there's no cooldown whenever you immobilize your enemies. So, this seems like a very good, like, the first person that comes to mind is, is, is an amazing Nami item who has 2 from the CC on her wave and bubble, as well as a, a healing and shielding abilities on her W and E. So it seems like a, a like Nami item, but a couple of, a, a, a ton of questions actually. So firstly, it's like, uh, 
for enchanters, when would you build this? Would this be like uh, your enchantment into this item, or would it be like enchantment into your normal items, like let's say um, Iron Sensor, um, Harmonic Echoes, and then like Staff of Flowing Water, and you get a, a Mega Drive if the game goes late enough, or will it be like a first item, or will it be like a like fourth, fifth item kind of thing? And bigger question than that is. Um, does all of these stack? Like, if you uh, immobilize multiple enemies, will this 15% cooldown stack? So if I get a, like, 3-man Nami bubble, will it be, like, a 45-second cooldown reduction? If I get a 5-man Nami wave, is it, like, is it, like, a... How much is it? 75% um, cooldown reduction? And the even bigger question than that is, you normally you would probably use this for Locket or Redemption to get, uh, get another round of Locket or Redemption in a team fight. Would the healing or shielding of the locket and redemption be reduced? Because all all the way back when people used to buy multiple lockets and redemptions per team, they they introduced this thing where you would heal less or shield less uh, on locket or redemption, uh, based on like an a cooldown per person. Where if you got hit by like a redemption in the next like sixty seconds or so, your the next redemption would heal you less. So will it? actually affect that because if it does then this item becomes significantly weaker because you give uh, you you're getting a less shield on your redemption or a less shield on your locket so it will be a lot worse whereas if that wasn't a thing this item would be way better so th those are like three huge questions on hex like mega drive and then we got the Ixali seed jar which is a pretty interesting item to say the least so it is cheaper than the majority of items being uh, 2500 gold it gives you 45 armor and MR, and the passive gives you 5% movement speed as well as this um, interesting passive where if um, someone on your team hits a plant, you will drop a seed that you can pick up and replant it. So there are like three plants you can take. Basically, it's honey fruit for a mostly more sustaining lane, Scryer's bloom which can allow you to relocate uh, the plant to get vision, which is honestly a very not very useful uh, thing to do. Because you can just use your wards, or it's just like, it's not a necessity to use a Scryer's Bloom, basically. And lastly, the Blast Cone, which is probably the most interesting one. Because if you can relocate the Blast Cone, you can get a, a couple of interesting gank angles, and a lot of interesting routes you can take that, to go around Vision. So, the only two people I can think that will build this is Supports or Junglers. So, Junglers to relocate the plants, like especially the Blast Cone. And Supports just because... No carry is going to be building this item and wasting an item slot. So it's either support or junglers or no one at all. I personally think this item is a pretty troll and I don't really think anyone's really going to build it. But we can't really speak too soon so we'll have to see about that. Maybe it becomes meta where junglers take this and they blast code over and gank like all the time. Like who knows. So yeah. Rod of Age is getting a very significant um, nerf where it stacks every 45 seconds instead of 30 which will cause it to take 7.5 minutes to fully stack instead of 5 so this will uh, make Rod of Age's um, users stack a lot more slowly so it's a lot more of a late game item yeah but you generally will get Rod of Age's roughly 4 minutes or 5 minutes into the game so it, it normally by 10 minutes at max it will be fully stacked but now it will need like at maybe 12 or 13 minutes to fully stack which is a quite um, quite a significant, um, quite a significant uh, nerf to the to the item because those like three minutes or so could be a big difference. So Fawn of Life getting a nerf as well. So the mark duration going down by a second. So uh, less opportunities to proc the mark, and the cooldown is going up by two seconds for all champions. So less mark that you can put on. So overall, it's a huge nerf to to Fawn of Life. So this might make Airy a little bit more viable for like enchanters, but. It is like the most popular support rune for Enchanter, so I can see why it was nerfed. And maybe it will make Aerie better for some Enchanters. And um, Guild changes, not really too important. Close friend changes, not really too important as well. Just a couple of nice um, extra features on the close friends, which if you already had close friends, it'll just be a nice, uh, nice change for you. Okay, communications. Um, emotes from Alice cannot be seen on your HUD. Not too sure how this is going to work. Is it like the PC one where the emotes come out at the side maybe? Um, and add an option to mute different kinds of player communications aside from the scoreboard. Maybe it's so like you can block them on the chat, block their pings or block their emotes. I I'm, I'm guessing, but yeah. So, share screen, not really important. Controls. So first one is really interesting. Players can now target friendly allies with tap caster abilities. So, 
Uh, I was thinking that maybe it was like the PC one where you can drag it over to the pro trait and um, cast it on them to e target them easier, but this one is not. Basically, I, I went and tested this. How this works is that uh, when you attack people, you have the option of lower self absolute, lowest health, percentage, and closest um, target. So this will follow that. And if you tap cast instead of casting it on yourself, you will cast it to like the lowest health absolute, lowest health percentage, or closer. So if you choose closest, you will still cast it on yourself because you'll always be closest to yourself. But the other two options will allow you to auto cast it to your allies, which honestly, I think this change doesn't really matter because. If you really wanted to cast it on your allies, you would manually aim it to them anyway, so this doesn't really make a very huge difference. Um, same for like the rest of these. I think all these changes doesn't really matter for the controls. Reporting, upgraded, intentional, losing detection, and penalties. This is very, very vague. Of course, this is a change that everybody wants, but nobody knows what this entails. Like, it's a very, very vague um, explanation here. Maybe there'll be an article on it later, but yeah. So, events not feature cool uh, countdown timer to give more info uh, when a new one starts. So I've, I've checked out the latest Kill and Morgana event. I don't see this countdown timer. Maybe it's only in the last few days. So, um, updated the visual effect for Solari Charge Blade. Um, haven't actually checked it out yet. Improved the Fi's power consumption, which is really good if it actually works. So, that's only for 90 and 120 FPS though. And optimize multiple parts of matchmaking. So... Uh, we'll have to see about that. Every time they say that, people still complain, so probably it's not really going to be anything noticeable. And yeah, so that's pretty much it for the video, guys. You can look forward to the to the uh, tier list and the bands coming out um, soon. And thank you guys for watching the video, and goodbye.